Find the directional derivative of the function at the given point in the direction of the vector v, which is x arctangent y over x. At the point minus 8 minus 8 minus 8, v is 10i plus 7j plus 7k. As always, we start with finding partial derivatives. Because directional derivative means finite derivatives, and we have derivative with respect to x, y, and z in this case. Derivative with respect to x is arctangent y over z. Because tangent minus 1 and y of y over z is constant. Derivative with respect to y will be a little bit harder. x is a constant, so should stay. Now it's going to be derivative of arctangent is 1 over 1 plus input squared. Multiply by the derivative of the function inside. Function inside is y over z, but y is a variable, so it will give me 1 over z as a constant. Derivative with respect to z starts the same way. x times 1 over 1 plus input squared. I forgot squared over here. So squared y over z times now y stays and it's going to be minus y over z squared because 1 over z prime is minus 1 goes down z to the minus 2. We could simplify this so it will look a little bit more approachable. For example, x can go on the top and then we could distribute z inside. So it's going to be inside of the denominator. So it's going to be z plus y squared over z because z cancels out with one of these z's but there was z squared squared so now it's still one z left and in this case we also could write down minus in front x and y distribute z squared in the denominator will be z squared plus y squared so z squared completely cancel out with the z squared over there very nice we have three partial derivatives found we can write down now that so let's see what was the question directional derivative of the function at the given point to the direction of the vector v remember we can not use the vector if it's not a unit and this one seems like not unit so must be unitized or unit so let's figure out the unit vector u because we're looking for d u f which is a gradient f times unit vector u we found gradient of f this is my gradient it's a collection of three vectors each is a partial derivative but u will be v over v right vector over size of that vector so to make it unit that will be so let's see that will be minus 10, 7, and 7 divided by a square root of 100 plus 49 plus 49, right? We can distribute it now under each uh, variable if you want, each uh, component, yes. Minus 10 over a square root of 198. I think oh yeah 198 7 over 1 square root of 198 and 7 over a square root of 198 nice this is my unit now what about multiplying so I'm gonna multiply this unit vector by this horrible looking uh, delta uh, um, horrible looking del f which is gradient not necessary because we are given point to plug in and it's actually good news so step one we found all derivatives step two we found a unit vector uh, direction we're given was not unitized so we found the unit vector step three plug plug the point minus eight minus eight and minus eight into Uh, into my delta f then it's going to be 
well, it's not supposed to call delta. Delta is actually like this sign, so it's del f, uh, gradient f. This gradient, if you remember by the definition, is a collection of partial derivatives. But now we'll be plugging minus 8, minus 8, and minus 8 everywhere. I will plug it into the uh, simplified versions. But you can also put a bar like so, a bar like so, and plug it minus 8, minus 8, minus 8. Very convenient numbers because we don't have to sign x, y, and z. Everything is minus 8. Tan arc tangent of 1 is going to be pi over 4. Because remember, pi over 4 is that angle where sine and cosine match. So angle um, of tangent of what angle gives you 1? Pi over 4. So that was very nice. Now, at minus 8, minus 8, minus 8, this bar means at. That's a very common notation. Uh, for the secondary, for the partial derivative with respect to y will be minus 8 and minus 8 and minus 64 over 8, which is apparently 1 half. That's what I see in my notes. And the last one at minus 8, minus 8, and minus 8 is going to be minus... minus 8 times minus 8 is 64. 64 plus 64, which is apparently minus 1 half. So we have three components of the vector now, pi over 4, 1 half, and minus 1 half. Last step 4 is going to be d sub u f is a product of the gradient times the unit vector. So, the answer will be, a, um, it's a scalar product, right? So it's going to be a scalar or a number. Uh, it's a dot product if you want this name. It's going to be pi over 4 times minus 10 over square root of 198, comma, 1 half times 7 over square root of 198, comma, minus 1 half times 7 over square root of 198. So, I was not supposed to do commas. I was wondering if you catch that. Remember, the answer is not a vector. So, I wanted to point out that this is what usually students do. They make this mistake and then they give the wrong answer. This is called a scalar product. A scalar product. So, sca scalar. Yes. Product. So, the answer should be a number. Thus, instead of a vector notation, it will be plus and plus. So we're adding all those numbers together. If you have your algebra done correctly, you're supposed to have, in my notes, I have the answer minus 5 over 5 over pi all over 2 of square roots of 198. Oh yeah, that looks very good. Minus 10 pi plus 7 and minus 7. And then it will be over 4 here. And then 1 half, 1 half. Yeah. Concrete common denominator and so on. Looks very good to me. So the final answer is a scalar. That's why we're calling, we're calling this dot product a scalar product. This is... A directional derivative of the function where at the given point the initial point is very important and then a direction is very important so not only we found a derivative we found a derivative with the given point p and then direction v which we had to convert into unit vector u by dividing by the magnitude because we don't need the whole size of the vector v we only need the direction so that's what we're doing here Hope, probably now you understand. Keep practicing. What else can I say? See you next time.